Good morning guys. Hello everyone. Hi, my name is EJ and I am here again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and well yeah, enjoy. So um this is slightly off my schedule, so this is great because it's practically a real-time update. Um in case you guys haven't noticed, I only do real-time updates if I'm posting an artwork that I grinded on for quite a while. So I love my 30 hour artworks. Um, it's a long grind, um, but it does take a while to get it done. So <laughs> those kind of updates are frequent. My The majority of my updates are always speed paints, which makes this real time update kind of a little off because it's a speed paint itself. But the only reason why I'm posting this early is because I wanted this I wanted to put it oh, I wanted to post this in time for uh, the character design challenge uh, because this is what this speed paint is all about is my entry for the character design challenge for this month and the character design challenge for this month is yokai kami kami yokai kami I, I think that's how you pronounce it I'm not really sure um so real quick character design challenge is a monthly challenge um it's a facebook group uh it's also i guess a, a group of artists uh who host it uh, there's awards and stuff um they do it monthly um every month they come up with a new prompt for a character and uh, for this month um i guess in honor of halloween because halloween is <laughs> in october um the theme for the month is Japanese spirits basically that's what yokai kami is yokai kami yokai kami I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that um, but yeah that is what the theme for the month is so now that I've talked to you guys about where my idea came from let's talk about what's going on in Krita in my favorite art software so in Krita um, I'm doing a bunch of quick sketches. Basically what I did at the very beginning was I did a Google image search for Yokai Kami, you know, just copy and pasted the term and just did a quick image search just to see what would come up. And obviously in the image search, there's just a bunch of different Japanese spirits that was drawn. Um, it's really interesting how the Japanese has quite a lot of different, um, names and variations of spirits slash ghosts you know um most cultures will just have a ghost or a witch or you know a few um odd spirits like a werewolf or maybe a dracula but um apparently in the japanese culture there's quite a lot more variations of them which i was really surprised when i was doing my you know quick research on it um, but yeah, so when I did a Google search image, um, I came up with all these different variations of spirits. And what I was doing was I was just simply just trying to redraw them, uh, just trying to come up with an inspiration for the piece because, um, this is one of those instances where when I started the project, I didn't have an idea in my head. Uh, I like, I had zero clue as to what to do for the challenge. And so doing sketches like this kind of helps loosen up your mind and helps generate ideas basically. So um, what ended up happening um, in my particular instance and how my ideas evolve in this particular instance was when I was scrolling through the Google image search to you know come up with something new, I saw a simple lady drawing. Uh, versus all the weird monster looking creatures that I was seeing it was just this one simple lady image. And I was like, okay, I'm kind of curious about that. Why did that come up? And so I clicked on it and that's how I learned about the Yuki Ona um, spirit, which is basically your standard white lady ghost <laughs> trope. 
I don't know what it is with like the white lady ghost, but it seems to be like a recurring motif theme in a lot of cultures because I grew up in the Philippines and that was a recurring theme like throughout my childhood. There's this white lady, it's a ghost and yeah, she's gonna give you nightmares, blah, blah, blah. And then I moved to America and lo and behold, there's that recurring theme. And then, lo and behold, we look at Japanese culture and they also have the same theme. So, in Japanese culture, um, the theme is basically like the white lady is, it's like a ghost that comes out during snow, uh, during a snowy event or during a snowy period. And yeah, it's just basically a spirit that wanders around during the winter. Um, so yeah, that's what Yuki Ona essentially is. And so that's when I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this lady. Um, simply because, you know, I was enamored by that one particular lady image that I saw. And the other reason was... It's going to be a simple drawing <laughs> and I really just wanted a simple speed paint because um, with all the art projects that I have going on right now, I knew that I really couldn't afford to grind on this project as much as I would like to. Um, I mean, my preference for a character study or a character illustration is to go all gung ho and do a 30 hour painting session you know I mean that's like one of my favorite things to do uh, on a character painting but I also knew that I couldn't afford that time wise just because you know there's a lot of art projects that I'm trying to wrap up in which case I knew that the only time that I could afford for this particular project would have to be a speed paint um, so like a budget of anywhere between three to five hours which is what this project is that just that's just how long it took me to just you know wrap up this illustration it was just about five hours um and so there's a reason why that's part of the reason why i ended up going with the lady because i knew that that was going to be a quicker thing for me to draw because i've drawn ladies before i'm not really in the habit of drawing monsters and so yeah that was i knew that, that was going to be tricky so so yeah, um, I went with the simple Yuki Ona illustration. Um, and then when I decided to do that, um, my next step that I did, which is obviously you, you guys don't see this in the video, was to look up mod model poses um, to kind of help me figure out how to display this character. Um, and so I saw this one particular instance of a model pose, which is pretty much what we're looking at right now. This girl that's kind of looking down in the ground with her hand above her head, um, kind of like brushing her hair um, away from her face of some sort. Um, very simple, shy gesture. Um, and that's what I liked about that particular image that I saw in Google image. When I did a search for model poses, um, it seemed like a very friendly kind of gesture, you know, since I'm drawing like a spirit and a ghost, you know, um, there's always this connotation that it has to be menacing and frightening and whatnot. And so I guess I decided to be a little different and kind of make it look like, well, hey, this spirit really isn't all that bad as one would think she would be, you know? Um, maybe that's my impetus, or maybe I was just attracted to the image I saw. I'm not sure, you know? Um, this is always the fun part of deciphering what my art cues are, because sometimes, you know, what I'm actively thinking at the time that I'm drawing is not necessarily what might have inspired me. So I'm not really sure why I chose this particular pose. Let's just leave it at that. Um, needless to say, though, I really like it. It was a very, very simple pose. You know, it's a girl that's just standing with a slight sway in her hips and head downcast. And she looks very friendly. So I was like, let's draw this. So I did. <laughs> there you go. That's what happened. 
and so basically um that's where um this illustration came from um so yeah i did a quick i did a quick sketch of um that model pose which is what you saw me do when i okay so earlier in the video when i did all those bunch of sketches basically i started sketching you know um creatures and spirits and whatnot and then when i saw the yuki ona ghost i was like okay well let me look up uh, model pictures and so that's when I started drawing sketches of like a bunch of model poses and then I picked that particular one the very very first one that I did just simply because of what I was saying like that girl looked like she had a friendly pose so I had to go with that and so I grabbed that pose um it was a rough sketch and so obviously what I did after that was did a cleaner sketch which is what this is now. I'm almost done with this cleaner sketch. Um, when I do my sketches, I pretty much have like a three-step process. First is the really, really rough one. And then the second one is kind of like all the corrections that needed to be made um, with the shape and gesture and proportions, especially the proportions. Um, so that's typically what my second sketch is. It's still slightly rougher, uh, but a lot cleaner than um, than the first sketch. And then, depending on the situation, if I needed a good clean line sketch, then I would go over and do a cleaner line sketch where I won't have as rough as the lines as I do compared to this one. Um, for speed paints, I typically don't do the three-step process. Um, in fact, even with some of my long grinds, I typically don't do the three-step process. Um, lately, I have been doing the third step, a much cleaner line sketch. I did that in the last character sketch, character painting I did, uh, the Delaga painting. Um, that one, I did a clean sketch, and then there's this other character painting slash environment painting slash crowd painting that I'm working on that I did a really good line sketch on that took me forever. Um, so yeah, but in this case, I'm skipping the third one because like I said, I wanted this to be a speed paint. And so of course, after all that is said and done, I do my very quick coloring paste. This, um, quick coloring phase um basically what i do is i take my random mech brush so that i can create different shapes i set a hue variation on it so i could get a slightly different hues and then i just throw a bunch of colors on my canvas uh, the idea being is that i wanted to introduce chaos because i'm gonna basically harmonize all this chaos later on with my smudging thing that i just love doing um basically what it does is just that it just introduces variations in colors that i normally wouldn't really think of um so typically when i do my coloring thing my coloring is really really simple and i've mentioned this before in other videos it has a tendency of looking plasticky if i just do if i just do my coloring technique like in the traditional way uh, but this one it kind of introduced a little bit more chaos and a little bit more variation which makes the photo interesting unfortunately it also has an effect of making it really super messy looking uh, people have criticized it so bad <laughs> so much um, but that's the fun of it though you know I mean on speed paints some of my speed paints get really wacky looking that I agree <laughs> it just looks horrible um, but to some of the speed paints, it works very well, uh, where the color variations just work really nice. Um, and then for my long grind illustrations, I just harmonize all those color issues all together. So I don't really have that many color issues on my long grinds compared to my speed paints. But yeah. Anyways, really interesting color way of coloring things. I learned it from Peter Polak. Look him up. After his graphics, really good artist. So yeah. Um, but um, my color um, 
my coloring is just really done quickly basically is what i'm trying to say because really my emphasis on, at this point is composition and the values that's really what i try to look for especially when i'm putting down my colors is the value range and whether or not i have good darks and you know a good amount of whites so that's really what i concentrate on also i've been doing this really cool technique if you look at the top right area uh, you see this color palette uh, this just eight color palette um, lately I've been um, using palettes from the color palette cinema website I love that website it's such an awesome website they have different palettes but basically the palette they have just restricted to eight colors and that's what I've been doing lately with my coloring scheme is that I've really been restricting my colors just so that I could prevent that whole messy look that I sometimes get if I just randomly choose colors from the color wheel. So this is really awesome, like a really nice little thing that I've been doing lately. Um, they have the palette docker in Kurta, and you know, you can create like many different palettes. And so basically I have this I don't know 20 to 30 different color palettes that I grab from color palette cinema that I kind of just use as my starting point for colors uh, so yeah um, with this particular illustration um, I had to choose a palette that uh, that is not as saturated Um, so yeah, I had to choose a palette that's not super saturated simply because, uh, the ghost, Yuki Ona, is basically a lady in white, wearing a white dress of some sort, and so I knew that the character was going to be super unsaturated, so I basically picked this particular one just because it was the most, one of the most unsaturated ones I could find. I did find, like, a few others that were fairly unsaturated, Unfortunately, the only problem with those unsaturated ones was the was that they were kind of leaning towards the darker ones, versus this this one was leaning towards obviously the lighter ones. So yeah, so I picked this palette and it worked very great. Um, the other issue that I had to troubleshoot slash had to worry about slash had to think about even before I started doing this illustration is the fact that the lady is just going to be in plain white clothing and i know that plain white clothing can get very very boring so i have to introduce some form of noise um or some form of variation just to make the image more interesting and basically how i troubleshooted that issue was i basically stuck a photo texture on top of the kimono so it looks like the kimono has a print to it you saw it earlier in the video um after i did my initial sketches there was this one image that i kind of tweaked a little bit kind of took out uh some of the darks just to keep the whites in um that photo texture is basically what I ended up using to overlay on top of her kimono just so that she looks like, you know, a little bit more interesting compared to just having a plain white kimono. Um, that photo texture introduced basically some form of variation and some form of texture. So yeah, it makes her outfit look a little bit more interesting. Um, I had a debate early on in in my illustration process, in my drawing process, whether or not I was going to smudge the photo texture because uh, in my long grinds, I typically do smudge some of my photo textures because really what I was after is like that variation look, you know, and eventually like when I smudge like the photo texture, I'll just end up painting, repainting it and whatnot so it looks kind of more painterly rather than um, a photo um, but on this one since I wanted to save time I just decided to just leave the photo texture as is instead of repainting it so yeah it kind of looks like a photo I mean 
if if you do a lot of digital painting you could easily tell that it's a photo versus if it was actually painted um, for some that's not very familiar with digital painting they might get confused and they might think it's hand painted but it's really not it's a photo texture so yeah uh, there was a debate in my head in the end I just ended up you know why ended up deciding to save myself some time and just keeping the photo as is uh, obviously I did some tweaks you can see me doing tweaks on the photo texture right now I wanted it to show up eventually basically but I didn't want it to make the white dress look too dark because obviously she needed to be a white lady so I'm doing all this crazy tweaks as much as I can just to make it look like hey look there's a print on her kimono so yeah I settled for this dark blue uh, color and then eventually what I'll do is I'll turn down opacity on the kimono just to that it's barely showing so yeah I turned it down to like 30% or so so yeah there's that print in that kimono and then it basically looks like a full-blown kimono <laughs> so yeah but yeah um this is almost towards the end of my illustration basically after I did this edit on this photo texture everything else is just pretty much straight painting uh, so yeah let's go and watch and see what happens next
So at this point in time, I'm almost done with my detailing process. And um, real quick, just to mention what my detailing process is. Basically, what I do is I delineate my edges just so that my shapes could read clearer. So basically, what that means is that um, I make some of my lines a little bit sharper. Um, just so that the shapes could read better. <laughs> So yeah, um, and then the other thing I do is I accentuate the shadows, make some shadows a little bit darker. They need some darkening, and then I add highlights. Uh, in this case, I didn't really do a whole lot of highlights, or I didn't really add a whole lot of highlights simply because the lady is already in white. So adding highlights on white is kind of hard to see, um, but. Yeah, those, that's basically my three-step process. And, you know, you see me delineating my edges right now after I move the face slightly over. Um, just making my kimono read a little bit better. So you can see the fold um, that I just kind of just drew in. And I'm actually going to detail the face real quick too. So I'm going to delineate the edges on, on the ears and whatnot. Um, and just make that face read a little bit clearer so yeah uh, i do this on a base paint basically and that's what that whole smudging action thing is is that i throw in a bunch of colors smudge things around into readable shapes and then i'll end up with this base paint that i work on and then i do my detailing on top of that um all in one layer typically um the other things that i did aside from this standard process that i just mentioned is um I obviously added some snow just to indicate that it is snowing um, and I've already talked about the print uh, on the kimono just so that the kimono is not looking too plain I decided to add a photo texture da, 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 da. Um, you saw me you know do that um, I also did some edits on her overall posture uh, her head the original model that I was referencing her head was really far back because um, she was leaning really far back, basically. And in my drawing, um, it looked really odd. In the painting, it looked like her head was, I don't know, <laughs> like way into her right shoulder or something. So I had to move it over and edit that real quick, which is what I did um, just not too long ago. And... Yeah, I mean, aside from those edits, everything is pretty much just straightforward uh, based on everything that I've done in my initial sketch. Um, I had issues with the hand. In all honesty, I do not like the hands, especially this one that I'm about to draw in. I, I really don't like how this one came out. Um, the one in the head looked a little bit better, but this one just looks really off to me. If I was to develop this piece some more, this is definitely something that I'm going to have to heavily edit just because it just, it looks funky to me. So yeah, um, I wish I had been able to troubleshoot it better, but yeah, I did not. But since it was such a minor part of the painting or it's, you know, you could I mean, it's just a, a hand. It's in a small section of the painting. It, it didn't really attract that much attention, so I decided to just let it be. But yeah, um, the hands just really needs a whole lot of work. But aside from that, everything is done, you know? I'm like checking to see how the texture works out. And again, like I said, there was a debate on whether I was going to smudge this in and then repaint it. And in the end, I just decided to just leave it as a photo texture. Um, I'm obviously doing some edits on it so that it fits the kimono better. Um, and yeah, I'm looking at it from afar, see if it got too dark. Because that was the thing with the photo texture. I was afraid it was going to get really, really dark uh, if I added it. But nope, her kimono still looks like she's wearing a white kimono with a slight print, hue print on it. So yeah. But yeah, this is my speed paint for the character design challenge for this month. Uh, I wish I really had more time to spend on it because the more time I could spend in the painting, the better it obviously looks. 
Um, but yeah, things are just kind of busy right now. Then I knew that I wasn't going to be able to pull it off. That I just have to settle for a speed paint. So here is my speed paint. Uh, uh, for a five hour work, three hour, four hour. I don't even remember. It's always displayed at the beginning of the video. And I forgot to read it when I'm watching this now. But if I'm not wrong, it was under four hours, three hours and a half. Um, I didn't do any work on Blender, which I typically do work on Blender um, to kind of help me with perspective issues. But since this was pretty much a straightforward character illustration, I knew that I wasn't going to have that much perspective issues. So, yeah, very, very straightforward illustration that uh, I'm glad I'm able to pull off in such a short notice because I wasn't really planning on doing the challenge until the last minute so for a last minute decision it came out okay so not one of my favorite speed paints for sure but it's a very functional speed paint so yep there it is thank you guys for watching this narrated art timeless video I will catch you guys in a regular update good night